start. All right, last time we're learning about the, the argument between the Levites <coughs> and the Kohanim. Basically, it was an argument between uh, Korach, that he was a Levite, and Aaron was in the same family, but he got to be made into a Kohen. And this was an argument that eventually caught the, uh, the, the, the imagination and flamed the inspiration of all the Jewish people. All the Jewish people took Korach's side. Okay, now here we're not talking so much about what convinced the Jewish people, but what was really the, the, the center of this, uh, this, this uh, argument? What was really the point? It must be something that was very, very deeply rooted in human personality and also in Judaism, which we can't, we can't forget that the whole purpose of Judaism is to reveal the good potential in everybody. And that's what, in, in, in a way, that's what everybody wants. You know, deep down, everybody wants their potential to be revealed. But in order to do it, is you have to make some big changes. And people didn't want to make these changes. People don't want to make changes. That's what, that's what Korach appealed to. You're okay the way you are. You're all right the way you are. You don't have to make good changes. Okay, what's the example? What's the example he took? God. God. God the way that God is. God is infinitely powerful. Infinitely awesome. When God revealed himself in Mount Sinai, it says everybody's souls jumped out of their bodies. When the, the high priest, Kohen Gadol, when he went into the Holy of Holies on Yom Kippur, if he thought a bad thought, then he would die. The, the, the life was so intense there <clears throat> that everything had to be exact, exactly right, exactly the way it should be. If not, then everything gets burned up. <clears throat> and we're going to see that this is going to be the argument between Shammai and Hillel later on. So that's basically what Korach wanted. He wanted the super perfection. The super perfection, but uh, is which is a good thing, but he said you don't have to work in order to get it. You don't have to really change yourself. That's the idea of the talit and the tzitzis. The talit is the surrounding level of godliness. And in a way it represents infinite power and truth and life and, uh, and reality. And this is really too, too, too much. People can't take it. Therefore God, in order to create the world, and also, the, the, in order to bless the world afterward that was created, so you have to have like strings that come down. You have to have blessings that come down into the world. God had to, so to speak, hide himself. So God hid himself. And then there could be these blessings that come into the world, these strings. That's like the Torah and the commandments and the, <clears throat> and all these, uh, you want to call it the, the, the articulations of godliness coming into the world. And that's what Korach didn't want. Korach said, let's have God in his pure, powerful state. You don't need our own with all these blessings and the beard of our own and come with blessings coming down into the world. And you don't need it. We're okay the way we are. And to prove his point, he went to Moses with a talit, which the talit we said represents the surrounding level of godliness that's infinitely high. And even more, it was blue. The blue also represents the gavur, the power of God. Because it says, it's called techelet. Techelet means that it devours everything. It's bad, everything. So it was all blue. So he said, what about, just to stress how ridiculous he thought that Moses' claims were. Here we have a talit. The talit represents pure godliness. And it's techelet, it's blue. It wrecks, it destroys anything that's negative, anything that's, and said, that's all you need, Moses, right? If, if you have a talit, you have a revelation of God, and it's all blue, and it devours everything, you, have to, you still have to have little strings coming out of it, little blessings and all these little details that you're doing with your commandments. And Moses says, yes, and everybody laughed at him. Ha ha. Now, we're going to see that really Korach was right, but all this is only going to be in the future. In the future, in the revelation, when the Torah will be truly revealed and godliness will be revealed, but it'll be revealed in a way that we can accept it, that we can take it. 
the world will be refined. Now we have to refine the world. That's what Hillel says and what Aaron was saying and what Moses was saying. We have to work on the world. We can't have the world in a state of or pretend that it's perfect when it's not perfect. You can't say that God should just be revealed here and just, you know, we can just do what we want to because what we want to do are wrong things. We don't want to do the right thing. In the future, when people want to do it, okay, we'll see, we'll want to do what God wants. Then you can have this big revelation that Korah was talking about without any strings. Let's, so let's see, okay. Zeoyah, this was Kinatosh Aaron. This was the jealousy of Korah on Aaron. Aaron brought blessings down to the Jewish people in order to elevate them. In other words, you have to bring blessings down to the Jewish people, and then you can elevate them to godliness. But godliness is not revealed here now. You have to bring it down and raise it up. This is the beard of Aaron. This is the beard of Aaron. These are hairs. And the hairs, this shows on of the Kohanim. Nimshach, Kedusha is drawn down. Holiness, Hamshachat, Ahav, Avaraba, love and fear to the Jewish people. But in Levim, the Levites, Adarab, exactly the opposite. Heviru Ta'ar. It says you can't have these blessings. You can't draw down. The Levites couldn't draw down these blessings. Why not? Because they couldn't draw down this level. They can only, they're only relevant to high levels. They can't really bring it down. If they, if they brought high levels, they could only bring down high levels as they are. As they, and that's not, that's not called a blessing. That's too much. Right? Like we talked about before, a person is poor. right? A, a person is standing on the street. He's begging for money. Please, can I have a diamond? You give him $20 million. The worst thing you could do. The person will take the money. Immediately, he'll be attacked by all of his friends. The, the little bit of money that he's got left, they'll spend it on, on drugs or whatever it is, alcohol or something like that. He doesn't know what to do with the money. It'll just drive him crazy. Right? It's the same thing. Too much of a blessing. It's too much. It's gavur. That's that was what would happen if it was in the hands of Levi, Levi the tribe of Levi. Levi, Levi is pure gavur, a power. Because Levi was not able to draw down these blessings, therefore Therefore, he was jealous of Aaron. He was jealous. And he hated him because of this. In a way, they say that there's nothing, no hatred that's worse than hatred that comes from jealousy. Because a lot of times if you hate a person, let's say he's got a, a person is a, is, a, is a loud mouth. He's a, a, a bragger, a thief. He's a... The, 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 a steal or something like that. He's you hate him because of something that he does bad. But right? so then the person can change. He can say, "Listen, I realize you hate me because I do bad things, and you know because I, I'm a Republican, and I'm a Democrat, I'm a whatever it is. But you hate me because there's bad things that I do, right? So I, I can change. But if you hate a person because he's good, what do you want the person to do? But you hate him because he has a nice voice, because he's intelligent, because he's successful." He's a, what do you hate him for? You, you want to be in competition with him. That's a different thing. Right? Maybe I have a nicer voice. Maybe I, have a, I, I, I can have more money. I can, but I hate the person. What are you hating him for? I'm hating him because that's jealousy. That's a scene that comes from Kina. You hate a person because he's successful. Right? So what do you want the person to do? The, the more he improves himself, the more everybody hates him. So that's why Korach hated Aaron. Aaron had a quality that he didn't put, that Korach did not possess, that he could bring blessings down into the world and, and benefit people. And Korach didn't and Korach didn't like that. Omar said, you don't have to have these hairs or the tzitzis. Shesarot vachutim, that these hairs and the strings, this is Hamshacha Bakinas Simsum. This is a contracted and watered down godliness. And therefore, Sha'al, he asked the question. If I have a talit that's all blue, the main thing is this color blue, which blue, it says, is also gvura. That it says it devours up and, and, and uh, destroys anything that's bad. 
So Omar, and he, they, they, that's what Korach said, that the main thing is the talit. And especially the talit, which is the surrounding level, if the talit is all blue. In other words, makif shu masame eni the surrounding level of godliness, which knocks out all the bad, like at Mount Sinai, right? At Mount Sinai, what happened at Mount Sinai? There was a tremendous revelation of God's power, and it knocked out everything bad. It says even it knocked out death. If at Mount Sinai the people wouldn't have sinned with the golden calf, then they would have um, brought the, I'm sorry, if, the, if at Mount Sinai the people wouldn't have sinned, there wouldn't be any death in the world. When this, when this level of the makif is revealed, so it says there's no, no bad can stand. The problem is, is that, that people can't take it. Shehu pater minatzitzis. So therefore he said, if we have this level of the makif, a revelation of godliness like it was in Mount Sinai, and so then all the bad is wrecked. It's like, like the future redemption, right? The future redemption, with the raising of the dead. You don't have to have all these commandments and things like that. Or the commandments are in a different way. Shehem chutim v'sarot. You don't have to have these little details and which draw down lights in a way of inner. But Omar, and he said, you don't need this at all. Because the makif is very, very high. It's higher than these strands and everything like that, or panimi, and if shaham, which comes from it. And how can it possibly be Shabbatalit and the Makif itself? There won't, lo yi mitzvah, this should be enough. The, the, you should just have the mitzvah of just the, the Talit itself. Good, you can have Torah, you can have the commandments, but you don't have to have all these details. The only time that the, the Korach said, can it only be that this Talit, that the, 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 the Talit was the whole thing of the Talit is to reveal godliness in the world. So have the makif itself, have the surrounding level, pure godliness in the world. That's what all you need. What do you have to have these little strings from that they're only just contractions? It says that in the future, after in the, the, when the raising of the dead, for instance, that there will be commandments, but they won't have the function of commandments. In other words, they won't draw godliness down. You'll just be doing because that's what God wants. It won't be necessary to do the commandments because that's what God wants. But now you have to have the commandments. The commandments also draw godliness into the world. But in the future, it won't have to be that way. So his intention was, This he will also be against not only just the beard of Aaron and the, 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 the talit doesn't have to, but he was against also the whole, and Aaron personally, but the whole entire idea that there should be kohanim. You don't have to have any blessings and strings coming down into the world. Similarly, also the thing with Aaron, you don't have to have any beard of Aaron, blessings, the blessings of the Kohanim. Therefore, said, I agree that there has to be a Kohen Gadol. For sure, it says in the Bible, everything it says in the Torah, you have to do. But everybody can be, I can also be the Kohen Gadol. Even the Levium, they can't draw down this level of holiness from these hairs before. But he said, a Talit, which is all blue, you don't have to have any strings. And if you have a big revelation of God, so you don't have to have all these details coming down from it. And that's what Korach said. The Magid Meshurim, <clears throat> there's a book called the Magid Meshurim, uh, Parshish Korach. He says, this is the, 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 the source of the argument of Korach against Aaron. Yeshlom, we can say that in the future, you are Levim Kohanim. It says in the future, really, the Levites, it said, will be elevated to the level of Kohanim. What does that mean? Like it says also the Arizal, Likuti Torah of the Arizal, of Rav Yitzchak Luria. It says about uh, Says because as yitale bechinat gevurot, it says the then the, this level of of the Levites, which is gevura, will be elevated. Lochi and Omer is all the rabbis say in Shabbos the atid Yomer liYitzchak ki ato avinu. In the future, will say to Yitzchak that you are our father. Or it, it says a midrash that says that the, we talked about this before, if you remember. That uh, 
God will say, I've had enough of the Jewish people. I can't take them anymore. I'm going to destroy them and make a new Jewish people. What do you say, Abraham? And Abraham said, what can I say? I, have, I ran out of arguments. You know, I've, I've, been, I've been trying to justify the Jewish people. And he got, Abraham said, just do whatever you want. God. I'll say, I'll say, and he said, okay, I'll, God said, I'll ask Yaakov, Jacob. He had a lot of children. He had a lot of problems with his children. What do you say, Jacob? Jacob said, listen, I also ran out of arguments. You know, I, I've been trying to defend the Jewish people. Do whatever you want. He, and Yitzchak suddenly popped up. And Yitzchak said, one second, God. <clears throat> Most of the time, the Jewish people are sleeping and working and eating and things. <clears throat> That's one third of the day. And the other third of the day, they're doing good things, right? The only thing at the time they have of the day is one third of the day is that, no, I'm sorry, one third of the, I'm sorry, one third of the day they're sleeping. The other third of the day they're eating and doing jobs and things like that. The other third of the day, that's when they have time to do sins. I'll take half of the sins on me. You take the other half on you. One, one sixth is on me, one sixth is on you. And God said, okay, you convinced me. That's what it says in the future that Avram lo yadanu, Yitzhak lo yorenu, God, you are our father. He says, who is you are our father? That refers to Yitzchak. Because Abraham couldn't protect the Jews. Ye Yaakov, but uh, Yaakov. Now Yitzchak, Abraham is kindness. Yitzchak is gvura, power. He says, therefore, in the future, it says that Yitzchak is going to be Ato Avinu. In other words, the, the main thing is going to be the Levites, the work that we did in the world. That the, in the future, the Gavuras will be the main thing. In other words, what does it mean? In the future, the true power of God, the true, like it was on Mount Sinai, that'll be the main thing. That'll be revealed. There's other explanations also, but that's mainly what it means. In other words, Le Korach had a good point. Korach wanted to bring the future redemption, but right now, he didn't want the work in the middle. Why didn't he want the work in the middle? Because he wasn't able to. It wasn't capable. He didn't have that. So he was jealous of Aaron. That he was doing this work to bring the future redemption, the raising of the dead. And Korach said, let's have it now. What do you have? What do you have all this? Right? We, were all, we were all on Mount Sinai. We saw the revolution, revelation of God. Alder, because similarly, it says that Rizal in, in the Mishnah, in Perak, hey, fifth chapter of Perak Yavot, it says, Kol machlokat shi l'shem shamayim, so fully kayam. He said, any argument, look over in Perky Avot, it says, any argument which is not for the sake of heaven is not going to last. What's the argument that's not in the sake of heaven? It says, it's Korach. Korach in his words is not going to last, right? We see they all got swallowed up in the ground. But it said, any argument which is yes for the sake of God, right? That they're all they're arguing about is the truth. And that's why that's what the whole Talmud is full, filled with. People want the truth, and God purposely made that people have different opinions so that there would be these discussions and arguments and come to a new level of truth. It says, any argument which is this, for the sake of heaven, so full it's kayam, it's going to be eternal. Why is it going to be eternal? What, what, what's good about it being eternal? We'll see in a second. This is the argument of Shammai and Hillel. Yikshu said they asked the question, Ech roi liyod machloket shit kayam. An argument that's going to be forever, that's not a good idea. It means you're never going to come to a conclusion. The argument is going to be eternal. <clears throat> Only one of the opinions is going to be the right one. right? God, True, God wanted there to be an argument between Hillel and Shammai. But generally speaking, the, 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 the conclusion is like Hillel. Why, why do you want to say that the argument is going to be forever? That's not good. It's good that they had different opinions, but you have to resolve the, the, the differences, right? He says, no, the argument is going to be forever. <clears throat> it says, when it says that the argument stays forever, this implies that both opinions will be valid forever. The Arizal asked the question, but Tirutsu and they answered, Mishum She'elu Ve'elu Dibre'elu Both opinions are the are the opinion of God. Uh, this makes no sense, but God makes no sense. Right? The Torah, that God gave a Torah, makes no sense. A, uh, Beit Shammai and Beit Hila were both saying exactly the eternal words of God. 
it came into the world to be to, totally opposite. But you have to remember, Hill and Shammai, that's not talking about the, you know, just two people off the street. These were holy people. They had the power to raise the dead. <clears throat> they, were, they, 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 were, they, they were pure people, right? Pure, the highest level of purity a human being can reach. And to them, God sent to them in their mind these ideas. It's not that everybody that has an idea, the idea is holy. But for holy people, it is. So it says the, their opinions were exactly what God, these, this is the eternal word of God. Okay, good, but the, but the, the opinion, the, the, the law goes like Beit Hillel. It doesn't go like both. Why does it say the argument is going to be forever? It says, Yesh Ladivrei Beit Shammai, because there are to the words of Beit Shammai. Gamkein also, Shorish Lamaila, the words of the opinion of Beit Shammai also has a source above in Atzilus. Raksha in Allah Hakein, but it happens to be that the law is not like Beit Shammai. That's just another detail. The law is not like Beit Shammai, generally speaking. Like it says in Midrash Shmuel and Pirti Avot. So that's what it is. In other words, both of them are the word of God, and therefore the argument will stay forever. Says the Rebbe, ends the Teros must be. It's an answer, but it's, it doesn't seem to be a very good answer. It says that Sofalit Kayem, it says the argument will be forever. The argument will be forever. And this argument is not forever. We know that the opinion goes according to Beit Hillel. But the rabbis do say it'll be forever, so it must mean something. They didn't make a mistake. But the Arizal explains the Asi that in the future, in the days of the Mashiach, the law is going to be like Beit Shammai. Like another explainer on the, on the Zohar. That's what it means in the end. The argument will really be, right? The argument will be eternal. In other words, the, the opinion of Beit Hillel, that's all this time that we're in exile. Because Hillel had to be lenient. Hillel was the lenient opinion. The world can't accept such a high level of godliness, such a, a tremendous level of perfection like Shammai wants. Shammai was usually a very severe opinion. It says it can't accept it. But in the future, when the world, world can accept this level of perfection that Shammai demands, is then the law is going to be like Beit Shammai. If so, the argument is going to be forever. The law is like Beit Hillel in the time of exile, and in the time of the future redemption, it'll be like Beit Shammai. Look, and therefore, what's a Korach? That's the same thing. That's why Korach wanted to make also now Kavura Sikor. He wanted to be that the revelation of God should be right now. Let's act as though the revelation of God is already here, and we don't need these blessings. That's what it means. A talit that's all blue. You don't have to have any strings. In other words, you want to do the commandments. Do the commandments, of course, do the commandments, but don't think that you're really accomplishing. You're doing the commandments because that's what God wants, but don't think you're accomplishing anything with the, the commandments. The commandments, every, godliness is already here. That's what he says. The, godly, the world is already perfect, perfect. We don't need all these blessings and 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 inspirations from, from Aaron and, and all these differences from Aaron. You do the commandments, but just because, you know, God said, we don't know, we can't understand God, you just do the commandments. But there's no accomplishment from the commandments. Godliness is already here. That's what she, uh, Korach said. Ba'av, also the Chuti also this strings of blue, that we said before, this is the light of chesed. The, the strings of blue, it's really white strings that are dyed blue. So really the essence of it is white. So it says, this is really the light. There's lights and vessels, like a soul and a body. So the soul of this blessing that comes down from the strings that are blue is really white. It's chesed, kindness. And the vessel, the outside of it is gavur. We talked about that before. Ki and it's in the second chapter of Kriya Shema. The second chapter of Shema, that's the level of Gvura. The second paragraph of Kriya Shema that says, if you don't do what God says, then you're going to get punished, you'll get kicked out of the land of Israel, etc. Then this says, that's Gvura. But nevertheless, if you look, there's, there's 72 letters. And 72 letters, this is the site of Chesed. Chesed. It's also the gematria of 72, Chesed. 72. 72 is one of the names of God. And it's, 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 it represents a certain level of high, high level of kindness. 
So it says that's gvura and kindness together. But really, he made a mistake. Okay, so that's what Korach wanted. Korach wanted the power of God Almighty to be revealed here right now. And in fact, he said that it is revealed right now. We don't need all these details and the commandments and things like that. You can do them, do the command, but you don't really need it. It's not really necessary. But the fact is, he made a mistake. This, what he wanted, cannot possibly be. Only after the world has been refined, that from this world, which is called the world of tohu, confusion, which is the level of gavura, there has to be refined all of the Dross totally. Then the Yetzer Hora, which is Gavura, will transform to be good. Okay, wh what does he want there? What's this Tohu and all this stuff? This is sort of a, a very dangerous idea, what, the, what he's talking about. Korach, Korach wasn't far away from like, you know, I, and it's not a nice thing to say, Shabbatai Tzvi. He wasn't far away from it, but, but he, it wasn't exactly the same thing. Shabbat Tzvi was a faker. He was a liar and he was a faker and he was a, a very low life person. <clears throat> but, and Korach not. Korach had, had the best of intentions. His intentions were good. That's why he convinced all the Jewish people. Right? <clears throat> this, uh, well, how did he convince all the Jewish people? What did, he, what did he convince all the Jewish people? He convinced all the Jewish people that <clears throat> godliness is revealed here. You have to do all the commandments. But you should know that you don't really need it. You don't need the commandments. God is here. The revelation is here. Pure godliness is already here. We don't need all these blessings. We don't need all these details. On the other hand, may his name be blotted out forever. Shabbat Tzvi, he wanted to just do away with the commandments. He just wanted everybody to do, you know, all sorts of sexual crimes, and all sorts of crazy things, and, and make blessings on it. It was the opposite. But the point of the matter is, is almost the same. In other words, what's he saying? The, rev the revelation of godliness, pure godliness is already here. The power of God is revealed here. So he says, we can't have that nowadays. Why, Why not? The fact is, God is everywhere. Ain't no Milvano. God is everywhere, isn't he? He says, yes, he's here, but he's here. And, and if we want to call it a surrounding way. But the world is not run now in a godly way. The world is now run in a very confused way. The bad and good is mixed together. <clears throat> bad and good is mixed together. This is symbolized, this whole idea that bad and good is mixed together. This is symbolized by what's called in Kabbalah, the breaking of the vessels. It says that when God created the world, the one stage in the creation was, is that God did a thing called breaking the vessels. So yet there was one stage in the world where all the 10 spheres, God's personality, was, everything was very pure. Pure kindness, pure love, pure power, pure. Everything was very pure and separated. This separation and purity, this is the power that Korach was talking about, that, 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 that drove Korach crazy. He wanted the world to be pure. He wanted the revelation of God to be pure. So, but unfortunately, what can we do? It was a good idea. But in fact, God did make this thing called the breaking of the vessels, which began to the potential of mixing up bad and good in the world. And when Adam ate from the tree, he internalized this bad and good so that egotism became the main thing, not godliness. And then afterwards, when the Jewish people worshiped the golden calf, it became even worse, and etc. And the, the, the first temple was destroyed, the second temple was destroyed. So now bad and good are really, really mixed up together. And through the course of generation of time, as we've been refining everything, but, but the, the Korach, he said, it's already free, free, refined. Everything is, is fixed up. But it wasn't. This was after the Jews worshipped the golden calf. The world was still very confused. Mm -hmm. So we, the, the fact is that we now have Torah of Mitzvahs, and the Torah of Mitzvahs, the, their function is to refine the world, to, 
turn from bad as well as doing good. So he says, that's what we, nowadays we have to refine the world. There's so much bad mixed in and people think that it's good. Look at all these other religions in the world. There's, there's hundreds of them. There's thousands of them. There's tens of thousands of them, of religions. And they're all as a result of this confusion of bad and good. They really think that they're doing good and they're really serious, but they're not. They're not. They're, they're worshiping themselves in the end, right? But there's a little flicker of godliness over here and a little bit of there over there. And, Right, the spirituality, it keeps them in order, it gives them a purpose, it gives them a goal, it gives them uh, the, uh, at least the, the, uh, uh, an idea that there is such a thing as bad and good. <clears throat> but nevertheless, it's not, it's not good. That comes all that comes from the result of the mixing up of bad and good, namely selfishness and godliness. So Korach said, forget it, we've already purified the selfishness. We can be, right, what we do is 100% okay. What we want, you want something, it's all right. You don't need car, you don't need our own and all these blessings and everything. <clears throat> says, but in the future, when we do refine the world, and this it could happen in one instant, the Yetzer Hora will transform to be good. I mean, just think it it it, it would the, the idea of this future redemption is not difficult. If you think about it, we, we have first the, the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He's the Mashiach. He's re, it's the Mashiach, right? But the redemption is far away. Imagine that all the leaders of all the religions stood up and they said, listen, we made a big mistake. I want you to know that you know, we had good intentions, but we made a big mistake and our religion is simply, it's not true. We have been fooled. That's what the Rambam says. He brings from Jer Jeremiah, prophecy in Jeremiah. Right? All the, 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 the non-Jews will say, Sheker nachalu avotenu. We, we've been fed lies and that uh, they all run to, to, to Jerusalem, whatever. The... <clears throat> so, I mean, it wouldn't be hard. Now we have television. You have the, the, the right, all these people, the big religions, uh, they're not uh, censored on Facebook, right? They're, they're among the few. And they'll get on and they'll say, listen, we made a mistake. That's it. In one night, all of a sudden, everything just transforms. Right? Say they say to their chosen cardinals, whatever, first, and then they, that's it. The whole world can just change, but it has to change. That's the point. When the world transforms to good, then the laws will be like Korach, Masha'enkin, which is not the case now. Hayom la sotom, now we have to do, we have to work. Yeshi and Nika it's very easy to make mistakes. There is what's called nurture to the external forces. That's the Yetzirhora. People now have what's called evil, selfish, imp self-destructive impulses. Kuli. Lohi, and therefore the chasadim, therefore nowadays, the only way to do it is with kindness. The gavuro, safilo, the kedusha, they can't be too much revealed godliness. It has to be watered down. The godliness, not, God forbid, not the Torah. Not to water down the Torah. Every word of the Torah is true. You have to keep Shabbos, all the laws of Shabbos are put on to fill and you have to eat kosher according to what it says in the Torah, the Talmud, the, the Shulchan Orach. But it has to be done in a way of kindness, in a way of love, a way of blessing. That's blessing. Even Kedusha, even holy things, they have to be tefillim, afilu de Kedusha, tzorich liot tefillim the gabi chasadim. Because nowadays the main thing is to make the blessings, blessings. You can't be too strict. You can't be too exact. That's why the law is now like Beit Hillel. Lohin, therefore, the law nowadays is like Beit Hillel. They're more lenient. Av Shemach Lokas, even though if there's an argument, and even more, it says the argument, if there's an argument in the Mishnah between Shammai and Hillel, it was for the sake of heaven. Nevertheless, Beit Shammai, it says Beit Shammai, if there's an argument between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel, it's not a Mishnah at all. It says the law is automatically the Beit Hillel. And the rabbis say in Parakam of the Shabbos, it says that the rabbis went up one day into the, what was it, into the attic of, was it Ben Gurion? And they, and, they, and they, they discussed certain things. And it happened to be that Beit Shammai, those people that were in, the, Beit Shammai means in the school of Shammai, that they were in, going to the school of Shammai. It says in, in the Gemur and Shabbos, Daf Yud Zion, it says the Oto Yom, that the day that Beit Shammai was, the law went like them because they had the majority. Haya, it, it says, 
Hayom Oya Hillel Kafuf. It says that the Beit Hillel, they were less, and they had to be sub, subservient to Beit Shammai. Beit Shammai, the law went according to them. It says that day when the law went according to Beit Shammai, Hayakachal Yisrael Kiyom, it was like the day that they, they made the Egil. It was like the day that they worshipped the golden calf. It's so bad. I mean, they, 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 they were holy people. It says, You want to say, just because the law was like Beit Shammai, so it was like the day that the Jewish people worshipped the golden calf. says, namely, what is it? I'm sorry, oh, I skipped the line. What's it again? It's for the reason we said before. What's the reason we said before? That nowadays the law cannot be like Beit Shammai. You can't reveal too much godliness. You can't be too severe, too precise. Rak Lati, but only in the future, it will be that the Gavuros, that these powers of Gavura will be elevated. Only in the future, when Egotism, gavura, will be elevated. Then, and elevated means that there won't be any more badness in ego. There won't be any more selfishness in ego. Ego will be a thing that is the way that God wanted it to be. Then the law will be like Beit Shammai. This is the whole thing of Beit Shammai. Asher Enki and Korach, which is not the case of Korach, Shalonichna, that Korach. The Korach would, was not willing to be number two and wait a little while and work. <clears throat> no. No, and therefore, therefore, Korach had a fall. Was, what does it mean? Korach, he wanted to say that the future redemption is already here. You don't have to work. You don't have to do Torah. You don't have to do commandments. Everything is already all right. Anybody, you want to be Kohen Gadol? You can be Kohen Gadol. From, from the tribe of Reuven, what did he do? He took 250 people from, the, the, from different tribes, and he said, all of you can be Kohen Gadols. You can be the high priest, right? Take this incense, offer it up. These people weren't even Kohanim. You can offer it up. Everybody, everything is free for everybody. Whatever you want to do, you can do. Right? Do it for the sake of the Lord. That's all you have to do. And it's a big mistake because the fact is what people want to do is, is not right. Now there's also this confusion. In the future, it says when people will want to do what God wants automatically, it says you won't even, they won't even have to be learning the Torah. Everyone will know all of the Torah. Then the law will be like Beit Shammai, like, like Korach, but now not. All right, the summary is, it says that the, that, that's the old idea of the beard of Aaron is to draw down this tremendous love into the world. That's the whole idea of the strings of the tzitzis. And because that the Levites, it says that they have to remove all their hairs, therefore Korach said, I, nobody needs any hairs. If we have to remove them, then nobody needs it. And he said, talit I'll give you an example, like a talit that's all blue, you don't have to any strings, you don't need these beards and hairs and things like that. In order, God is already here. Everything is already revealed, right? And that was a big mistake. Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu replied and said, even if Talat is totally blue, you have to have strings. Why, Yan, since Ki Iker Yesoda Torah B'mitzvah, because the whole point of doing Torah and the commandments is Lahamshik Giloy or in soap to draw down revealed godliness below. It's not here yet. It's not like you say, Korach, the godliness is already here. The power of God, the almightiness of God, whatever is already here, not so. We have to have Torah and the commandments in order to draw godliness down below. Like it says, <laughs> That that you're excited about God is wonderful, but you have to bring it down into the world in a normal way. And not just like the, the Levites, they were like fire, like power alone. <laughs> that was the level of the Levites. <laughs> in order that there should be Godliness revealed in an orderly fashion in this world <clears throat> in a way that it'll be enter in everybody's personality so that people will refine themselves to the point where they won't want to do bad anymore. They won't want to worship idols. They won't want to go against the Torah. 
Shiyam Shacha Begili Lamata and Or Panini. It has to be what's called an inside light, a personal, intimate relationship with God. Everyone will have Milamaila from Istaushlus that from above the whole entire creation will be part of our normal, regular, everyday life. How can this be? It can't be by means of you. What you want to say, throw caution to the winds. Whatever you want to do is godly. It's a big mistake, Korach. Good. It's good that you're thinking about God, and it's good that you want to have the future redemption. It's good that you want everybody to be purified, but it's a long process. You have to have these strings, that you have to have these drawing down of lights of God into the heart, the Bechinus Peninus, in an inner way. In other words, it has to be done little by little, and it has to be done in a way that's in a positive way. Even though she that these strings, you want to draw godliness down into the world, you're doing the opposite. These strings, they're consuming. This is contracting God. This is concealing God. But nevertheless, this is the only way to do it. That if you want to have a drawing down of godliness from above, from above from above the whole creation, it's impossible unless you have sarot v'chutim. You have to have all these strands and limitations and commandments and details, etc. The imlab, and if not, there won't be anything drawn down. It's like a person that says he wants to drive a car. Look at all these people driving cars. What do I need lessons for? I'll just jump in and drive. That's all. Right? Jump in and drive. God will tell me what to do. Right? Okay. Maybe maybe once in a while it might work. Who knows? There might be people that, you know, they saw how their father does it and they did do it. But 99.999% of the people, it doesn't work. You know, you have to have gradually learn what to do. The same thing is bringing godliness into the world. You want the world to be a perfect place. Great, but you can't make up your own thing. You can't do whatever you want, right? You can't. You read the Bible one time. That's it. I'll do whatever I want to. Now I'm I'm, I'm refined. That's what. That's what basically what Korach wanted. Says the Rebbe. That's the whole purpose of the creation. says God created the world in order that the world should be an orderly meaningful place. God wants it to be revealed here. There'll be a revelation from above, and it was like, like it wasn't the holy temple, but it'll be everywhere. Look what it says in another place. As we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. We'll continue this tomorrow. Beautiful, huh? Really beautiful. Just, just incredible. What the Rebbe is saying here is just so fantastic and practical and deep. Right? We would, uh, you want godliness to be revealed here in the world. That's the whole purpose why the world was created. But you have to do it the way that Moses and Aaron say to do it. <clears throat> Let's now learn the Sikh of the Rebbe from Tafshin Nun Aleph.